All right, guys, this is the Matty Ice Show. I am live right now at the number one dispensary in Las Vegas. Actually, the number one dispensary in the world. We're at Hardeen right now. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen them all over the gram, all over social media. Um, big dispensary. They have the best influencers and artists that come through here. And most importantly, they have the best uh, products right here. So um, reason we're doing this interview today, we have Mesa, Mr. 100 Summers here. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. We're doing it here because also you're you're sponsored by Hardine. Yes, 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 yes. Hardine is family. Definitely. How did how did you guys become a family? Um, um, I flew in here, and I was doing the typical run of going to Planet Thirteen to go get the the weed, and uh, I, that's all I really knew until shout out to Chill Capo. Uh, he kind of forced me to come over here. We were at Planet Thirteen that day. And he was like, man, y'all got to stop going over there. Y'all come to Hardeen. They show love over there. The whole vibe is different. And I'm a very loyal person. So when he told me at first, I was like, yo, bro, like, I'm good right here. Like, I love Planet 13. But sure enough, you know, I'm very thankful he did drag me over here. Because ever since I came here that day, the first interaction, it was so much love. And then just the, the relationship just grew organically after that. How do you think that this dispensary um, is so successful with their marketing campaigns? Because... Actually, I've never seen a dispensary market the way they do. Yeah, I, nobody markets the way they do. Um, I gotta, you gotta give it up to Adam. You know, uh, he's the, he's the brain behind it. it. It's, it's his, it's his baby, and uh, I believe in the brand so much that I embrace it like it's my own company. You know what I mean? So I, lo I love the way they treat the people. You know what I mean? I love, I just love the whole concept of how they do everything. It's just, it's just so fire, bro. You know what I mean? All right, so I gotta ask you, what's your favorite product here? Um, man, I'd be lying to you if I said I had one, man. I just come in here and I just tell them the butt tenders they have so much knowledge and they're so educated on, on the weed that it's almost it's like overwhelming for me. I just tell them, you just give me you know, give me something to feel good, give me something when I want to go to sleep, and they just they just take care of me, man. Everything's good. There's really nothing that's bad. It's, it's not like you know you, you're gonna pick something and say, ah, oh, this was alright. You know what I mean? Everything is high quality. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, so since we're kind of on the sponsorship angle, also Dro is a company that you work with. I saw you were just on Instagram the other day, and they sent you like a bunch of a bunch mm -hmm. of gear. Um, explain to me exactly what Dro does, where they're out of, how you Dr live. Yeah, Dro is based out of. Uh, shout out to Jay Dro and Wit. Um, Dro's uh, clothing company. They're based out of Denver, Colorado, and um, you know we follow each other on the gram. I met him at the clothing convention out here in Vegas actually I want to say about uh maybe two years ago and that's when I first uh, uh tapped in with them and then you know we kept up with each other through just on Instagram or whatnot and uh they ended up sending me a small package one time like uh I want to say three weeks three three weeks ago they sent me a small package and it was right before um I had a crazy weekend I was with uh I think I had an interview with Alexis Texas I wore one of their jackets. I was I had a concert with Jada Kiss at, in New York in Irving uh in, in SOBs with Nino Man. I wore one of their hoodies. And uh I, I forgot there was there was another one. I can't pinpoint exactly, but every picture that went up was with a famous um influencer, you know what I mean? And um I usually like I feel like there's always gotta be a purpose in everything you do, you know? Like you can monetize everything. You can monetize what you smoke, what you eat, literally, like, you know, everything. There should be a reason why you're wearing that shirt, the reason you're drinking a certain product, eating a certain product, like, the, you should be involved with the brands, and, and I'm big on that, you know what I mean? So, being from Jersey, um, what's the biggest differences when you come out west? Big difference, big difference. Everybody here is more lax, and they're more, and they're more welcoming. And um, I feel like I was just telling you before off camera, you can catch a lot. Uh, all the big artists come to Vegas. And I feel like when you catch them in Vegas at an event, you know, I feel like um, I feel like you catch them in a good vibe and a good in a good aura as to poses maybe being in a New York and the tri-state. Everybody's always so on on edge and on kind of have your guards up out there because how it is over there. You know what I mean? But that's how I feel. And, um, you know. So I was just in New York yesterday um, for my second time ever, and I stayed right in Times Square just to get like the tourist vibe, whatever, mm -hmm. feel the city out. I'm from Illinois, Chicago, so I understand a big city. But to me, like New York, after experience what I experienced yesterday, 
was um it's it's like it's like it's like Chicago on steroids like pretty much to me. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. And I thought Chicago was crazy, but New York is just a whole different level of a city. Yeah, just from the vibe of it all and the culture. Yeah, when you out there, it's just uh, it's a very fast pace. Uh, it's very aggressive. Like I was giving an example to my boy, like New, like it's like New York people, it's like tri-state in general it could be like the most negative people. I'll tell you, man, I just did this, and instead of them response being like, "Oh man, that's what's up," man, they'll be like, "Fuck out of here, man. Let me see." Like, like it's always like that, that that you know what I mean? That aggression towards the end. Like it's not like that everywhere, you know. So I I've learned that like it's cool to have that uh, tri-state ambition and hunger, but you gotta know that turn it off because not everybody else in the in the country and in the world uh like uh receives that in in a good way you know so you, you gotta you gotta just you know you gotta learn how to adapt where does mr 100 summers come from mr 100 summers come from a song that i did back in 2014 it's called the 100 summers and really just because my whole vibe is in like miami summertime in the caribbean that's that's like my that's what i like you know so everybody's like my birthday's in the summer, you know, so that's like my nickname. Everybody calls me Summers, you know what I mean? So let me ask you this, then. In 2014, wh when was the year you actually took hip-hop, took being an artist seriously and said, this is going to be my career? Well, well, I've been rapping since I was young. I've been rapping since I was like 14, 15 years old. Um, and I was I started off as a battle rapper in my neighborhood. Um, so or what neighborhood? West New York, New Jersey. That's where I'm from, Hudson County, West New York, New Jersey. Um, and that's, that's where I started, you know, um, and I've been rapping, literally, I always knew I was going to be a rapper, like, told my mother I was going to do it, you know what I mean, like, I was recording on, I used to record on tape decks, or back, back then it was uh, a boombox, you had the CD player, um, the tape deck, and then you could plug in a cord mic, and I would, uh, buy a, uh, I would go get a mixtape, uh, instrumental CDs, a blank tape, and it was one take, play the instrumental on the CD and then you hit record you hit play and record at the same time with the cord mic coming out the boombox and that's how that uh, that's how long I've been recording music for who do you think is the best battle rapper best freestyle I'm gonna say Cassidy's right, right there um shout out to Cassidy um I got a record with Cassidy too back in the day um I don't know man uh that's that's a that's a tough question because there's a lot of uh cats that are not battle rappers that I feel could be battle rappers and could smoke a lot of battle rappers do you feel like the industry's kind of like gone away from that though? Like I feel like that's not happening anymore. At least I'm not seeing it the way I would like to see. What it. like the battle rap yeah, scene? Like battle rapping. Freestyle. I mean, now the battle rap scene is, is is definitely still big. Now you know, shout out to uh, Remy Ma. She got the female league now, so it's definitely a it, it's definitely a niche market. I want to see more. Yeah, it's definitely a niche market. Uh, I would like to see more of it in, like in hip hop, like that essence how it was like, like Nas, Jay Z, like you know, yeah, like you know. Like, we go, re uh, like, on some, just, like, even the Big L days, like, on some real, like, sportsmanship, you know, lyricist type shit. So, for you, is is it Nas or Jay-Z? Oh, man, it's that's a tough, that's a tough question. They both, they both super, super nice, bro. They both super, like, Hov is nice, Nas is, that album that Nas made, uh, that first album he made, he was 19 years old, bro. Do you hear what he was saying at 19 years old? Like, he's prolific, in my opinion. And then, but then you listen to Hove, and and then like, you know, Hove just got better with time. That Reasonable Doubt album is is, is like you put them against Reasonable Doubt and and Nas's first album together. It's like you can't even you can't even choose one. You know, each one teach each album teaches you something different. It's crazy. At fourteen, my first concert I ever went to was the Stillmatic concert. Fire. The Orange Velour jumpsuit. You know, it was at the House of Blues in Chicago, and that was Fire. my first hip hop concert. Ever. Fire. Fire. Crazy times. I'm 35 years old now, so I was 21 years old. Fire, bro. That's how long that album's been up for. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Um, all right. Obviously, you have very close ties with Jada Kiss. Mm -hmm. How did you and That's Jada, my big bro. How did you guys link? Um, I had a Kiss to do a feature. Um, actually, I had paid him to do a feature. And um, he already kind of knew about me through uh shout-out to Is Biscuit. Is Biscuit was the one that connected those dots. Biggest blog. Yeah. Um... And uh, his biscuit had told him about me, and he tapped in, bro. And uh, but he tapped in differently because not only that, you guys seem like you have a very um, genuine relationship, friends, and he support. He like you know he liked our poet. He supports you a lot. Yeah, it's um, 
Yo, honestly, I'm blessed, bro. You know, it's like been my dream since I was a kid. You know what I mean? Uh, when I when I did the record with Kiss, I remember it was a big deal. But at the same time, this was before verses. And I and I and I always say this story. I'm always the type of person that I like to I like to play for culture. I don't I don't play for for who's hot. You get me? Um. I'll give you a perfect example. I would work with Fred DeGasson a lot. Anytime I get a chance to work with Fred DeGasson, rest in peace, I would, I would work with him. And I remember uh, my man, who's actually not my man anymore. After he said this to me, we, we, we're, not even, we, we're not even friends any, anymore. You know what I mean? And this was years ago. This was when Fred was still alive. And I remember I was trying to put a show together in SOBs. And I was like, going to do a show, like messing friends with like all the features that I got. You know what I mean? And I told my man, I said, yo, man, um... You know, I got Fred pulling up. Like, I'm excited about it. You know what I mean? Because I know Fred was, his, Fred's a monster, top lyricist. He'll smoke anybody. And he told me, he said, man, he's washed up, man. Why are you working with him? You know, you need to work with somebody hot. Some one of these young cats that's hot, ah, ah. Shortly after, rest in peace, you know, Fred the Godson passed away. But now, now if you have a Fred the Godson verse, right, it's something special. You know what I mean? You can't get another Fred the Godson verse. And because I played for culture, you know what I mean? That's what happens. That was the result. That was a result. I never undermined him because he didn't have the number one record. I knew he was always his number one lyric. Same thing with Kiss. It was always a dream for me to work with Kiss. You know what I mean? When I finally got the chance to work with him, people would tell me, yo, yeah, that's a dope feature. Kiss is a legend. But you know, he's not hot right now. Look like, at DJ Khaled. Puts him on every single album of his. Can you believe that? I just did a record with Kiss. And people are coming out their face and telling me, yo... Yeah, he's 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 he's. Khaled makes sure to include him in pretty much I think every DJ Khaled album. JD kisses off. Yeah, he's a, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a he's a, yeah, he's a, he's not hot now. But then again, it was a decision that I made. I played for culture, right? Versus happens a year later. Try to get a JD kiss verse now. Which, by the way, I heard he's just a really good person too. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. That's my big bro. He put me on a game. He's the first big artist in the game. That put the stamp on me and, and let everybody know, like, yo, it's my guy. You know what I mean? So raspy. So like, what um what has he told you personally that has stuck with you? And it could be anything. Anytime I hang out with Kiss, he tells me something. Always. He's like uh He's like Mr. Miyagi, bro. You know what I mean? When I did the record with him the first time and he came out the booth, this is what I did to him. <laughs> You know what I mean? You gotta understand, Kiss used to rap with Biggie. Like, Biggie snatched up the locks. DMX. You that's know legendary me? shit. Yeah, bro, that's 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 legendary shit, bro. Like, that's I'm honored to even be able to FaceTime him. He picks up my call. You feel me? Like, that's a blessing to me. You know, I don't take it for granted. He knows that. And any, any way he can help me out, because I know he got a lot on his plate, he helps me out. But at the same time, like, you know, I'm putting in my own work, you know what I mean? So, what, um, when was your first album dropped on the uh, platform? 2014. And when was your last album dropped? Uh, 2022? 21? Or 22? 21? Yeah, so 21. You, you didn't drop an album this year? Single no, stuff. Just, like just, yeah, right now, I said I'm done. I'm actually done with the albums. And I'm just doing singles from here on out for, for, for a little while. Singles and videos until maybe, um... A fan base is demanding an album again. Exactly. Yeah. Where would you say a lot of your fans are coming from? I mean, is it... I have a lot of fans. I've been doing shows in Vegas for a long time. I got a lot of fans in Vegas. Where are you doing shows out here, pretty much? Uh, I was doing shows back in the day, like in Oracle. Then I started doing shows at Embassy. And just up to recently, thank God, bro, I, I you know, I opened up for Jada Kiss and Cam at Dre's. You know what I mean? So... That's a big deal for me, too, because only A-list artists get to hit that stage. You know what I mean? Shout out to Dustin and the whole Dre's family. Shout out to Kiss for letting me open me up. You know what I mean? Huge. Dre's, is, um, Dre's has been there now for like 25 years. Yeah, they're a staple. Now Ross is a residency there. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty cool. My guy G-Shit's G here, and uh, he actually got to open up for Ross there. And oh, that's fine. That's fine, G. That's what's up. So, um, you know... Dre's is a staple here now for hip hop. They're bringing the best artists mm -hmm. consistently. A hundred percent. And it's been going on like that for a long time. Mm -hmm. So you have a track out with Ross right now. Run it up. Yeah. That dropped, I'd say maybe 
uh, four weeks ago on DSPs. Video dropped about seven months ago. Where'd you guys shoot the video? Was we shot it like a, on a yacht in the, in the water. Yeah, we shot it. We shot it. There? Yeah, we shot it in Miami. Yeah. So how did the connection with? Um, uh, I'm assuming. How did the connection with you and Ross? I know you're very close with Jeter K. I'm very close with Jeter K. Yeah. Um, Mad respect for him. Yeah, shout out to Jeter. The connection with Ross started with Hardeen. Yeah, started right here with Hardeen. Um, I spoke to actually I had hit up like five people because I, I had the song actually had two verses on it and his biscuit was like man you gotta take that second verse out and you gotta add Ross so shout out to biscuit for that because he he uh, planted the seed but you know he's telling me like I had Ross's phone number at the time you know I don't have no connection towards towards Ross you know what I mean so uh, I reached out to a couple people and in the end Adam shout out to Adam. Um, the owner of Hardeen, he put me in contact with Jeter, you know, and, um, I think Jeter asked Adam, you know, how important is this to you? Adam, he asked Adam and Adam told him like, yo, this is one of my guys. He's one of my ambassadors. Like he works hard. You know what I mean? And, uh, he put me in a chat with G with Jeter and the rest is history. Jeter, Jeter, Jeter held my hand through the whole process. So, cause Ross is also picky about like who he's doing videos with as well. One hundred percent. You you just don't get a Ross video like that. You know what I mean? In a yacht with a bunch of models. And yeah, stuff yeah, like no, it just doesn't happen like that. I feel like um, the way I carry myself, how persistent I am. At the same time, like I was pulling up on Ross in different cities, and anytime I saw him, I would let him know after we did the record. I told him, man, I need that video, Ross. You know what I mean? So let's let's actually um, get into the business side real quick, and you know you you said that. Jeter kind of like held your hand throughout the whole process and got you, you know, I'm sure he kind of fine tuned everything and made everything happen. Let's yeah. actually talk about how important having somebody like that is having a Jeter K in a camp like that with Ross, one of the biggest artists, because nowadays it's very hard to even um, get to an artist. And if you do, a lot of bullshit happens in between. Mm -hmm. But somebody like Jeter can make something like this, you know, be facilitated easily. Yeah. Um, I feel like when you start the game, you're going to weave through like the bottom feeders you know what i mean um if you're a hard worker and you're persistent and you're consistent you'll break through the level of bottom feeders eventually you'll catch the eyes of the bigger people and one cosign will lead to another cosign and and i feel like that's how it works so like i feel like the way you get in contact with a person like jeter again which if you rewind back it was really Adam who connected me to Jeter, and Adam's another good person. First of all, it has nothing to do with rap music, doesn't do rap music, owns a dispensary. You know, to be honest, he doesn't even have the time to hit somebody up and actually be like, yo, what's up, man? Can you help this guy out get a record with Ross? You know, so what does that tell you? It has nothing to do with the music, bro. It has to do with how you are as a person, bro, how you treat somebody, bro, how hard you work, how, you know, if you show up late or you show up on time. You know, if you're respectful for others, if uh, you're considerate of other people's things, like if they're yours, you know, people notice them values in, in people. And I feel like that is what got me in the door and keeps on getting me further because that's how I move. You know what I mean? Everything is everything is has to be like certain type of principles. And that's how you get in contact with a person like Adam, a person like Jeter, a person like Jada Kiss, and even Ross, man. Like Ross has showed me hella love. He didn't have to do the video. He didn't even have to do the record, bro. You know what I mean? He didn't have to do the song. He did both. Did the record, and then he tells me, pull up on him. I'm at this photo shoot with Kodak Black. That's what Ross tells me. First time I ever met him. Just pull up. Yo, what up? Show me how to love. As soon as he see me, he's like, yo, we got to shoot the video to that thing. I think fire. I was like, say no more. I was going to, you said it before I was going to ask. I was going to ask. That was going to be my next question. You know what I mean? And then that's it, uh, you know? I would pull up with him, see him in different cities, and anytime I would see Ross, I would tell him, Yo, Ross, I need that video, man. You know, I need that video, man. Hold me down. What's changed uh, maybe since the video, the songs dropped? Have you got a lot more um, I mean, media attention? Have yeah, you? man, everything's changed, bro. And I always tell everybody, like, you know, you got to make you gotta make the, the serious investment, you know, and for, for everybody else to take you serious, man. You got to, like, you can't expect... You got to level up. Yeah, bro, you can't expect these people that have worked mad hard to be, like... Oh, yeah, I'm going to help you out. When they went through hell and back to get to where they at. Fact. You feel me? So it's like, I always, like, I, you, you, that's the mentality you got to have, bro. You like, know what I mean? Here I am right now, you know, and I, I'm i like, what, 300 interviews in in like three years right now. Um, 
I know that uh, Bootleg Hev here, you know, he's he's a, an ambassador here, you know, to Harding, and mm -hmm. he's somebody that I would say I even, you know, look up to his work ethic and how he's moving and, and who he's interviewing, you know what I mean? And um, even for myself, that's what I'm on right now, bro. Like, nothing's being handed to me. I got to fucking work, bro. I was just in New York last night, and now here I am doing another interview, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, bro. Because Yo, it don't, it don't stop, man. It don't, it don't, it don't stop. I'll give you a perfect example. Same shit that you just said right now. I'm coming out here to to uh, Vegas to do this show with Kiss and Cameron, right? Uh, about two, about a week and a half before, I get an email from Joyner Lucas's manager. He says, "Yo, we want you to open up one of the shows in the tour." I'm like, "Shit, what date? Let me know, right?" They tell me the day before the show in Vegas. And I'm like, damn, I'm like, yo, can I do another city? And my manager's like, bro, don't even ask that question. You're crazy. Shout out to my manager, Rocco. He said, yo, don't even ask that question. You're crazy. He said, just say yes. We'll figure it out. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, this bro, we, we flew to San Antonio. Now, mind you, there's a time difference, right? I flew in from, from Jersey on Friday, right? Got here Friday afternoon. At 6 in the morning, I was back in the airport to fly to San Antonio. And to get back to Vegas, I booked two flights. One of them was going to be a default. One of them I wasn't going to take. One left Austin, where, uh, one left San Antonio where the show was with Joyner, right? And the other one left, left Austin. So if I didn't make it to the one from San Antonio, because the one from San Antonio left at 10.40 p.m., I was on stage like at 9, 9.20, 9.30. So that I was playing that one super, super close, Right? And I'm, like, pressed because I'm, like, damn, I got to get back to Vegas, like, ASAP, right? The next flight was at 6 in the morning leaving from Austin, so I would get back to Vegas the day of the show. God bless the, the flight from uh, San Antonio got delayed to, like, 11.45 p.m. We rocked the sold-out show in San Antonio, got off the stage, Uber was outside, jumped, jumped on the Uber plane back to Vegas. Next day, it's another sold-out show over here in, in Vegas. Like, you got to want it, bro. You know, no excuses. And you got to put your money behind it. There's no way around it. All these rappers, they don't want to put no money behind this shit. How you expect anybody to take you serious if, if, if like, you'll go spend money on clothes, you'll go spend money on, on dumb shit, but you won't put money behind what you supposed to be. Especially if you're independent, you got no choice. Trying to make a career out of. Are you independent right now? Yeah, I, I'm actually independent, but with so raspy. You know what I mean? So we got an independent thing going right now. Do you, do you see yourself taking a... A different deal later on? Well, we're waiting, actually, to go major. You know what I mean? That's, that's the next phase. Uh, I think Kiss got... A so Raspy's with Kiss? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think Kiss got a hand in two more albums with Def Jam, and after that, you know... So that's your ideal situation? That's that's home. You know what I mean? That's family. You know what I mean? Um. So for right now, that's that's where I would go. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you were just uh, at a party with Diddy... And a bunch of other moguls in the game. How did uh, you connect with with Diddy recently? Um, I saw a picture on your IG and everything. Yeah, with Diddy, uh, it was I was with, I was really with Nori. Nori's uh, I fuck with Nori. Every shout out to Nori, Drink Champs, EFN, Young Really, Sunny, like you know, Ching Bling, Booth, everybody. You know, that's that's like my secondary family. They like a group of cats that I look at like in the game, and they like motivation for me. You know what I mean? Because like, you know, I look up to them. I look up to Nori and how he moves. Eventually, hopefully, one day I could be like that and care of my whole team and and just be. He's really the pioneer of podcasting. Like, I remember him doing the Drink Champ shit, like, on some hood shit in a room with, like, you know, and look at it now. So, like, you know, I'm glad that he was able to reinvent himself, not only think just as a rapper and made a, made a, made a big change in the culture with that. So within the culture right now, obviously we've lost a lot of legends the past couple of years. Most recently, Takeoff. What do you think um, the industry needs, the hip hop community needs to bring change to gun violence within the uh, community? I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna tell you right now, we gotta stop rapping about killing each other. That's number one. I like, we gotta stop. We gotta stop glorifying that. Like. Y'all gotta be smarter. There's gotta be you're like it's so easy to rap about killing somebody, bro. Like you, you, you gotta make your brain work hard and come up with wittier lines. Like, like rap is so fun when you really, when you really look at the lyricist aspect of it. You feel me? 
So I was in the interview. One thing I picked up, I interviewed Jeter like maybe like a month or two ago. And he said that when he was growing up, the artists were coming into the game to get out of like the projects and the air. They were coming to make money. They weren't coming to kill each other. They just wanted to make money. Like that was about getting out of like the situation they were in. And music was their way out like to get to a certain level. It wasn't like killing your, your people. It was to get money. And I think that's really what has changed a lot now. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. It's like, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd, be just, I'd just be skipping shit. So as I hear, like, pull up on my app and I'll skip. But I do like Little Dirk's music a lot. He's, he's one of my favorite artists. I don't even, like, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, like, shout out to Little Dirk. Shout out, but just, like, moving forward from here on out, I can't support anybody rapping about killing people, bro. We just lost Takeoff, P&B Rock. Yo, these people are getting shot, killed dead like we nothing why is hip-hop the only genre that does that but you could have like stevie nicks still doing shows at 70 years old that's the longevity hip-hop should have i think pe- people need to also just like get back to just being a like a good like be, be a person man like why do we need to like just pull out a gun and shoot somebody like, over like you know what i mean like that's my take on it yeah like, bro and, and 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 again over a chain like you're gonna kill somebody bro like yo Take his fucking chain, dude. You don't need to... You know what I'm saying? If you're going to rob him, rob him then, bro. You know what I mean? Like, that's my take on it. Like, people need to... Listen, I understand that people might be in situations one day where they wake up and their mom might be in the hospital and their daughter needs to eat and they got no fucking money and no hope. Okay, cool. That sucks. You know what I mean? Um, But to take somebody's life... Like, yo, I also understand, like, you're in certain situations. Like, rob him then. You know what I'm saying? Don't take his life. You know? And I don't agree with that either. But... People need, there needs to be like a fine line here, bro. Like, it, people are just too wild, man. Yeah, there's no fine line, nothing. There's no respect for kids. Like, like look at all the things that they're doing to kids. Right. Like, look at, like, you know, forget the adults, bro. Like, look at what they're doing to kids. They're doing, taking little kids, snatching them up. Crazy shit, bro. Do you think Balenciaga, do you think that was actually planned by Balenciaga? Um, I think, you know, I really, again, that's a different level. Of like when you go into that rabbit hole, it's it's deep, and some people, for some people, they get too lost in the rabbit hole. So I didn't think anything. Actually, like when you see like the leathers, like that was a little bit weird. I didn't think that. I didn't like immediately look at that and say, "Oh, that's a bondage thing." You know what I'm saying? What weirded me out is then they had the child pornography court, court case, like documents. That right there, you put you, then you put two and two together. That made that thing weird for me. That's so, where it got weird. For me. So I look. Put me up to speed because I don't know. So you saying? So that- what happened was is they put the Balenciaga had a marketing campaign that they say they hired a marketing agency for whatever. Whoever you hire, you still gotta fine tune that within your own agency before you your own business before you put that okay. shit out. So they hired a marketing campaign. The marketing campaign put two chill two kids of like dressed in like BDSM gear, and on the back of like the the desk or whatever there was like court papers of a court case with child pornography and stuff, and that was actually on the desk like zoomed in, and um. And it came out in the picture. It was in the picture. Yeah, bro. That's that to me. That was that like the the leather stuff can be like construed either way, right? But that right there was like that's like saying putting it in your face. Yeah. So like that right there is like beyond beyond disrespectful, bro. Like that's like beyond. That's like evil to me. That's evil. Yeah. yeah you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Like that's evil shit. Like you're doing you if you got like the mentality to do something evil like that to babies to kids, bro. You you don't. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. God forgive me for saying this, but yo, bro, you don't even deserve to be on this planet, bro. You know, it goes back to like that movie, um, uh, American Sniper. Mm-hmm. Have Have you ever seen that movie? Of course. All right. Do you see when the dad's telling him like, yo, there's three type of people in the, in this world, um, the wolf, the sheep wolf. And um, the sheep dog, and the sheep dog pr- protects the sheep from the wolf, right? I'm I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that, bro. I feel like in this world there's good, and there's evil, and sometimes, bro, the good has to fight the evil, and sometimes, yo, people gotta go, bro. Uh, them, I feel like them people that violate kids, they they they're evil, bro. I feel like they gotta go. You know what I mean? And God forgive me for saying that, bro. It's been a pretty, um, I mean, that was a pretty shocking thing to see. And I, I don't know how Balenciaga is going to recover from that. And a matter of fact, they actually sued the people for $25 they did, they, million. They, they, hold, they, had, they took the lawsuit away. Yeah, they sued the market. They're guilty, bro. They're, they, they, in, they're, something happened there where they, uh, first of all, how dumb are you to do that? Like, to me, that's just stupid. You know what the meaning of You're Bal- fucking your own business up. You know what the meaning of Balenciaga means, though, right? Like, what, what the word means? No. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, supposedly it's a. Uh, a satanic 
Oh, Yo, Rick, you know, right? What's in there? Yeah, what's the ball? Like, what, uh, what's the... Uh, like, uh, the... I was gonna buy some blood check and It was like a like a famous demon named Ball Rock. Yeah, I, I Ball know, was Ball uh, something. something. And uh, he prayed uh, on... Baphomet, Baphomet. Ba- yeah, he yeah. prayed on kids. You, oh, the, yeah, the Baphomet. The Baphomet. And he would... He and, would and, 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 it, and I think the children. ancient name is Balenciaga. His name is Balenciaga. His ancient name. So, and that this this demon would prey on, on, on little kids. You know what I mean? Sacrifice. It's crazy to think that that stuff's really going on in the world. It really is. It's been going on, bro. It's crazy to think that. You know what I mean? Only difference now is phones now, so we're seeing it more often. Mm-hmm. But the world been 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 an evil place. But you know, I, like there's both. There's good, and there's evil. You just gotta pick a side and which 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 one you want to fight. You know what I mean? You a dad, Mason? Oh yeah, absolutely. To a beautiful full four year old boy. So one. One boy. Yeah. Married too or no? No, not married. No. So one boy. Yeah. Um. Family, obviously. Mm-hmm. Extremely important to you. Family's number one. That's my that's your my parents balance. Still up? What happened? Your parents are still up? Yo, my, my 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 you know, my situation growing up is a little different. You know, my father died when I was young. You know what I mean? What's young like? Uh I was four years old. Okay. Yeah. And uh you know, situation with my mother is it's a long story, you know what I mean? But I grew up I grew up outside, you know, with a lot of different role models. Um I grew I grew up around a lot of women. You know what I mean? My aunts, my sisters, my mom, and that's how I grew up, bro. You know what I mean? All right. Well, before we end this interview, tell me um, what your supporters, your fan base, even me, what's coming with um, Mesa for the start of 23? Because this year is pretty much um, a wrap. Um, Just expect singles every three to four weeks, definitely. I'm um, going on tour at the end of this month. We're going to the UK for the first time, so I'm excited about that. Um, I got a new record that's in the works. Um, I got French Montana on the hook. Okay. I got Vado on the second verse, and I'm working on getting Big Bro Kiss now on the third verse. Huge. You know what I mean? So that's going to be my next big record. But again, you know, working with these big artists, you know, just it's not as easy as it seems. You know what I mean? A lot of litigations and you know they got clearances that you got to work on so it's gonna be uh it's gonna be an interesting journey for that but maybe another uh you gonna run it back with russ i would love to man that's my <laughs> guy man which is this huh <laughs> that's sure. rose man well um yo uh appreciate hardeen for having us and uh, you're gonna actually do a freestyle too right oh yeah we'll do a freestyle we're gonna, we're gonna do a freestyle so we're gonna we're gonna have a uh, mesa do a freestyle and um I'm going to always shout out the brands, you know, Bel Air, um, Ethica, extremely close with Ethica, and obviously Dro, we're at Hardeen. Shout out to Dro, shout out to Hardeen, shout out to Bel Air, shout out to, uh, yeah. shout out to Wiz's Gin, you know what I mean? Shout out to my guys, Adam and Zach, you know what I mean? Shout out to DJ Bonix, So Rash BMMG, the whole family, bro, the whole conglomerate. It's Taylor nothing. Gang, you already know, we outside. Facts, let's go. Freestyle the way. Yo, you guys already know what it is. We at Hardeen right now, dispensary. We smoking the best gas. We got the Bel Air right here. But we got Big Mesa, Mr. 100 Summers. He's gonna drop an exclusive freestyle on the show right now. Hit him with the beat. Let's bring in the Brick Dog Mesa, let's go. Yo, you know what it is, man. It's your boy, Mr. 100 Summers, 2023. I'm done being humble. I'm counting money on y'all, and I'm flexing. Shout out to the family, MMG, So Raspy, Matty Ice. You know what it is, Hard D Sounds. Tap in. Yeah. Listen. Uh, word on the streets is that I'm reaching new heights I look around, not a hater in sight Got my money on my mind, hit the gas Running right through the light I thank God, boy, for living this life These niggas couldn't see me in my worst Let alone in my best The villa down in DR, that shit come with a chef The new F8 Ferrari, that come with the top off And most of these so-called real niggas knock offs Yeah, that's why I stay in my lane Out the way until I'm right in the way All them niggas that was hating back then Know they hiding their face A hundred miles in them niggas couldn't finish the race Moving up the chain, nigga, who the fuck is the top boss? Lamborghini paint the same color as hot sauce Team getting money now from Vegas to Sacktown NJ to New York, Dallas and back down All summer haters watch how I stunt Pulled up with something fast with the trunk in the front Told them niggas I was leaving, they can stay if they want Took that ride to Delaware and got right with Lamont Yeah, you need your money in bags, that's why you limited I need my money in tax, near the dividends 
Yeah. All the theme sounds, Matty Ice, MMG, so raspy, shit, boy, summer. Let's go. Yo, you already know what it is. We a heart dean right now. We smoke the best. We drink the Bel Air. And this is the only place we're going to. We ain't stopping anywhere else. We ain't going to Planet 13. We only going here. The best. The biggest. We gonna tap in with Matty Ice, man. You know what it is. We holding them down in Jersey. East Coast. He coming soon, you heard? Let's go.